mic, so we're good. Okay. All right, so this should be fairly easy to test because I just need to run my AI companion, okay, which is in user Google AI Inventor commands, and then I just start up AI Starter. And inside here, we now go to connect emulator. It will take a little bit of time because I don't have the emulator initialized yet. So it's going to initialize the emulator and it will want to update the uh, AI companion part of it and so on and so forth. But getting back to the app. So assuming this part is working, how do I record the coordinates and as well as the time? Which component gives me a sense of time? The clock. The clock. Okay, very good. And then within the clock, how do I, how do, how, how is time represented? Do you guys remember? Okay, in milliseconds, because you can convert the now, which is an instant, into milliseconds. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's one way to do it. And it needs to update the uh, emulator's uh, AI companion. It, it will ask me, do you want to update? Once it updates, we want to reset the emulator, restart the whole thing, and the second time it's going to be okay. So we don't want to open it, we just want to be done, and reset the connection, and then start the emulator again. There we go. Because this is a single screen application, and we don't have any file stored where the file path is actually important, and that's why it's okay to use the AI companion. If you're writing an app that requires multiple screen, you probably do not want to use AI companion as a tool to help you debug your app. in here we have the app here so if I just you know kind of drag my finger around in the screen yep that worked so are there any questions about this particular app at this point okay nothing too mysterious it's really just you know being able to draw you know whatever I drag my finger on okay so that's that's not bad okay it, it works um, then the second thing I want to do is, you know, it's just utilitarian. I want a way to reset the screen to clear it. Yep, go ahead. Can you make the lines thicker? Thicker? Yes, absolutely. Do you remember which property of a canvas do we use to change the thickness of lines that we draw on screen? It's actually a part of the properties. You can see it inside um, the property of a canvas. So I think uh, you should be able to find here. Line width, that's it. Yep, you can change the line width, then you can make it thicker if, if when you increase it, and you can make it thinner if you decrease it. So all lines will be the same thickness? Whatever you draw at that point will follow that thickness. But whatever you have drawn already is drawn already. You cannot retroactively change things that you have already drawn. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right, so we want a way to kind of reset and clear the screen, but I don't want any buttons, remember? So the only way, or not the only way, but one way to do that is to look at all the events of the canvas and say, okay, what can we do to trigger the clearing, okay? And we have all of these, right? Now you can use a touch up, okay? Now the problem with, with using a touch up is that means every single time when you're done drawing, when you lift your finger from the screen, it's going to trigger touch up and then it will clear the screen. Now, if that is okay with what you want to do, it's going to work. Okay. So we'll go ahead and use a touch up. I just want to illustrate what happens when we use this one. So in the touch up event handlers, we'll just say, okay, we're going to clear the screen. Okay. This is the only modification to this particular app. 
We go back to the emulator, and we keep drawing, and now I'm going to lift my finger. Bing. Everything that I have drawn is gone. Okay, draw, you know, holding onto my finger on the screen, it's okay, but the moment I lift my finger, bing, everything is cleared. It's okay for this app because I want to record it and be able to replay it, remember? So it's going to be okay. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to kind of the more important component is how do I remember this, you know, the stuff that I have just drawn and be able to replay the sequence? Okay, so let's find out what to do with that one. The first thing I want to do is to get rid of this draw line here. Okay, we'll get rid of this one. Or we can just disable a block, which is another way to quickly debug a program, is to say, okay, let's disable this block here. Not to collapse, but to disable. Which means this block is really still there, but it is quote unquote commented out. Okay, you can see it, but it doesn't do a single thing. Okay, because it's a good reminder of what we actually need to do. So in this case, it doesn't really do a single thing, except you know, to change the <coughs> paint color to blue. Let's get rid of that one too. Let's disable that one as well. So now it's not doing anything. But what I want the app to do is to remember all the points, remember? Okay. So what we want to do is to have a global variable. The reason why I know instantly it is going to be a global variable instead of a local variable is that list is maintained by drag. But it's going to be used later on by another event handler to redraw all those lines. So I know it has to be a global variable because local variables cannot be shared between event handlers. And I need something that can be shared between event handlers. So we need a global variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and make one. So we'll initialize a global variable. We'll just I'll just call it points, okay? And it's gonna be an empty list to begin with. We go to lists here and we just say that okay, let's start start with an empty list. So given that is an empty list to begin with, what we need to do with drag is to add items to the list every single time we get the event, okay? Is that okay? All right, so which is not too bad, not too hard, because we just go to list and we use add items to list because we do want to add to the end of the list. So add is really appending, which is the one that we want. And then we say, okay, what are we adding to? Okay, the variable name is points. So we use global variable points as the list that is being changed. And the item that we're adding by itself is a list. And at this point, let's just say that time is not important. I just need to know the location. So the location that I'm interested in in the drag is really just the current X and the current Y. So I use current X, current Y, to make a list of two items. And this particular list is added to the list of points. So this way, everywhere I drag, you know, I basically create a new item. But this won't give me the first point, okay? When you first land your finger on the screen, that is not considered as a drag event. So the first point is not gonna be represented like this, okay? It is a start, okay? But you don't know when to record that one. So we look into another event handler to deal with that. We look at the canvas. Which event handler do you think do you think will report the location of the first point? Touchdown. So touchdown is the first one. So we will use this one to initialize the entire list. So we basically say in here um, points as a global variable. We want to set the whole thing to a list of one item. That one single item is a list itself. And since we're not recording time, we only need the X and the Y. So the touchdown X is the X coordinate of the first point. And then the Y coordinate is really just the Y of the first of the touch point, the touchdown event. Okay. So the touch up is gonna clear just the screen itself, which is no longer needed. So I'm gonna take it away because we are no longer drawing anything while we are dragging, okay? So how do I, how do I, what do you think I need to do to this program to verify that I'm getting all those points and being able to you know, draw those points and replay that sequence, but with not, without using the timing issue, timing part of it. 
with a touch up, maybe you can just repaint the entire thing. Is that making any sense? So I'm going to redraw all those lines in the touch up event. In other words, when you're dragging your finger on the screen, it's not going to do a single thing. The moment you lift your finger off the screen, then it will draw what you just drew, okay, and stop. Okay, so we'll make the program behave like that. Okay, so what, what do I need in touch up? If I want to go through that list of all the points that I have seen so far and paint those points and connect those points, what do I need in touch up? Sorry? Draw a line, we need draw a line, okay? So, so let's pick out the components, okay? Which is not a bad way to start, okay? So we'll, we'll pick out some of the items, okay? Um, what am I drawing from where to where? And do I need anything on top of draw a line so that instead of drawing a single line segment, I'm drawing, I'm connecting all the line segments to form whatever line or shape that I drew earlier? Okay, so we need to go through the list. Now, when you want to go through the list, there are several ways to do it. There are some ways that are very convenient, but may not be what we want to do. So let's go to lists here. There's one particular thing that, is, that seems to be like, whoa, this is really cool, but it doesn't do exactly what we want to do. I think it's under control. It's called for each item, okay? Because for each item works for lists, and we do have a list, don't we? points as a global variable is a list of individual single points. So it seems like for each item it's going to work. But if you use for each item, you can draw single points or dots, right? How do we connect the dots using for each? You can sort of do that, but it's not really the best way to do it. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you guys two chunks of code, okay? Two equivalent chunks of code, one using for each, and the other one is using just a while loop, okay? And you guys can kind of decide for yourself which one is a little bit better, okay? But I know that for each is the current set of points, right? The what? The item? The item is a list, right? Right, so when you have a list, okay. the, the for each loop will basically go through each item and give you a chance to say, okay, what do you want to do with this particular item in the list? And it is guaranteed to go from the beginning to the end of the list. So the ordering is determined. Okay, and in our case, the item is a list of two points. Correct. Which is a single point, but it doesn't give you the previous point. Uh -huh. Yep. So which is which is kind of the yeah, problem. The variable that's always keeping track of the previous Yep, okay. exactly. So we'll go ahead and do this first, okay? So we'll go ahead and just use a for each and basically say, okay, it works to a certain point, but we have a problem, okay? So we'll go, go through this and say that, you know, um, what is the list that is supplying, you know, the items? Well, it's called points, okay? It's my global variable points, which is the list supplying these individual points. And then with each individual point, I just want to draw a dot because that's all I can do with a single point. Or I can draw a circle if I want to. Okay, let's draw, draw a circle because that's more visible. So I say draw, I, I wanted to do a draw point, but you know, it's not going to be um, as visible. So we'll go ahead and do a draw circle, like that one. So when I have a, when I have a draw circle, I can specify the radius and also the center of X, center of Y. And those are all individual, the X of the current coordinate and the Y of the current coordinate. So I have to use the select with each one. X is going to be the first coordinate of the XY coordinate. And the list is no longer points, but item, because we are getting individual items of the global variable points. So item itself is a list of two items. And we want to use the first one as X. So we specify a 1. And then we replicate this block here and choose 2 to be the y coordinate. And as far as the radius is concerned, we just need something that's kind of visible on the screen. Uh, 5 should make it quite visible. Okay, so I'm done with this program at this point. So at this point, the proper behavior of what I think the program should do is to let me draw on the screen by dragging my finger, but it won't show anything until I lift my finger. Then it will just 
kind of plot a bunch of dots on the screen. Is that okay? Let's check that. Let's check out whether that's what it's going to do. Okay, go to the emulator and you know, touch down. Okay, move around a little bit, lift. <laughs> Okay, sort of, you know, what you expect it to do, right? Okay, but it has no clear ability now. So if I wanted to be able to clear the, 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 the event to do the clearing, it's probably touched down before, you know, like at the beginning of the new drawing sequence, I can clear the screen. So let's do that, just, just to make it look nicer, because otherwise you won't be able to tell, okay, did it work or not? Okay, so let's change that. And now it should be a little bit better. As soon as I touch down, it will clear the screen. I can draw stuff and then lift my finger and now it draws it, it draws the individual points, but not the, the connection between the individual points. Is that okay? Alright. So the question now is, um, but I want lines. I don't want individual individual points, I want lines. What do I do with this program to draw the lines? Okay. There are several ways to do this, okay? The first way to do this is to uh, maintain two additional local variables to keep track of the previous point. Okay, if you want to use list, you can use just one global variable for that. So we'll go ahead and do this. Okay, so we go to local variables and then we say, okay, we have to utilize a local variable to do this. Okay, we'll change the name of the local variable and we'll call this the previous point which is initialized to the first point of points, okay? So there's a particular reason why I have to do that. So uh, when we get to that part of the code, it will be obvious. So I want to initialize the previous point to be the very first point of the entire list as that we know as points. So we go to lists, we uh, pick out select, and we say select the first item of points my global variable, and let's pick out the first one. So there we go. So one here, okay. And then we, we move this entire loop inside here. Okay. Are there any questions at this point? Now, at this point, the program doesn't really make use of previous points, so I better find a way to use it. Let's just keep the draw circle so that we can highlight the actual endpoints of each point. But in the addition to this, now we want to say, oh, let's draw a line. What line are we talking about? Oh, but we have that local variable called previous point, and this is the, the current point. So I'm going to replicate this to say, okay, this is my x2 and y2. But my x1, y1 is coming from previous point. So we'll replicate this one and replicate that one. Oh, okay, I didn't quite replicate this time, so I think say duplicate and put it over here. Oh, I did duplicate the other time, it's just somewhere else. Okay, fine, go away. There we go. And remember to change this one to the previous point, like that, okay. And let's just say that I'm forgetful and I thought, okay, the program is done. <laughs> but the previous point never changes, right? So it's going to draw a line from the first point to all of the other points, which is which has a kind of special effect, which is kind of neat in a way, but that's not what I want. But let's go ahead and check it out anyway. Okay, let's find out what it's going to do. Okay, click, we draw, yeah, circles are work, they work the best. There we go. Not quite what I want, right? Okay, if I draw the letter S, okay. As I said, you know, circles work the best. Spirals, okay. So we draw spirals. It actually is kind of cool like that, right? But that's not what I want because I forgot to update the previous point. Okay, let's go back to the blocks, fix it, right? Okay, so that means after each iteration, at the end of each iteration, I will say, oh, don't forget, the current point will become the previous point for the next iteration. Is that making any sense? Okay. So we just have to say, you know, with, the, with this block here, we now have to specify and add a set. 
go to variables, use a set here. And what we are doing is we are setting my local variable previous point to item. Okay, because the, the current point which we know as item will now become the previous point for the next iteration of this loop. That's all I need, really. Okay, so let's let's check it out. Okay, is this little simple change gonna fix the problem? Okay, let's draw the letter S. Hey, it's working. Boy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that okay so far? How I kind of progressed, you know, with this block of code. So we got, if I go back to the to the code of the project, um, if you find it a little bit hard to read because some blocks are, you know, like the draw circle, we kind of know what it's doing. The draw line, we kind of know what it's doing. So let's go ahead and collapse one of these blocks so that it's easier to look at the overall code. That's better. So are there any questions about this, this block of code at this point? No questions? Is it okay at this point? Okay. Now, how about the timing piece? <laughs> Let's go ahead and add the timing to this whole thing. Okay, so we go back to the designer because we need a clock, which is a part of a sensor to keep track of time. So we go to sensors, we drag a clock into here. Um, I can disable the timer at least for the time being, okay, because the first part is really just to record all the time, okay. So we go to blocks, and as we record the coordinates, we now also have to record the time, which, may, which means each element inside the list is really not a two uh, item list anymore. I have to really watch my mouth because I was about to say two tuple, which is uh, a mathematical way to refer to a list of two items because that's coming from CISP 440, which is the class that I taught right before this one. So I have to do a context switch on my head real quickly like, wait, hold on, no tuples, lists. Okay. So we say, look at this list here. We have a third item to, to add to the list, which is keeping tr track of time. Now, if you just want to know what the time is right now at this point, easy peasy. Okay, you just go to the clock and say, tell me what is now. Okay, so you go to now. That's all you need. Now we have a three, you know, item of a list of three items where we keep track of the xy coordinate and also you know, the time mark. Right? What is the current time? Is that okay? Not a problem, right? It's not going to have much impact to the other code if we choose not to use <coughs> timing in this block of code that draw all the lines, okay? So it will still work the same way because I'm still using the first and the second item of the list as the coordinate. So it, it should still work. But it doesn't hurt to double check to make sure that the code is still working the way it's supposed to. Okay, it is still working. Very good. No problem. So now we go back to the app here and go like, okay, but now how do we incorporate timing into this whole thing? What do you think? We have that instant, you know, already stored, right? You know, we, we know the exact moment that each dot is captured. The question is, how do I know when is the right time to display that dot in this part of the program? What do you think? Okay, there are several things that we have to consider. The absolute time is not important to us, okay? Because we don't need the absolute time, we just need to know how much time has elapsed from drawing one point or having the drag event between the points, between the drag events. That really is what we need to know. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is knowing that delta, that difference, is just what we need in order to determine when to draw again. Is that making any sense? Sort of? Okay. All right. So we want to have a mechanism where we can wait a little bit until the right time. Then we proceed and say, okay, draw that point. And then we wait again, wait until the right time, 
Then we draw the point again, then we wait again, wait until the right time, draw the, another point again. That doesn't seem too bad. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm gonna make a procedure to do that because otherwise this code would look really kind of clunky, which I don't like. So we'll make a procedure and just say, you know, wait, well, we just call it wait. Wait is going to take a few parameters because we need a few things. You know, there are a few things it needs in order to do the calculations. So the first thing it needs to know is what is the original time. <coughs> okay. And okay, I take it back. We'll change this one to original start time. Okay, because you know everything starts at a particular time, which is the time that we capture the first point the first dot of the entire list. It will need another one to keep track of the original time, which is the time when a particular point was drawn on the screen or captured on the screen. So this is original time. And then it will need a third one, which is the current start time. Okay, when did we start the f to draw the first point at this point? And then it will just wait until the, the correct time. Okay. Okay. So let's take a look at this code and find out, okay, what are we going to do in this case? How do we know when is the right time to, um, to go back that we have waited you know, the correct amount of time? So the first thing we need to do is to find out, okay, how much time is between the original start time and the original time? Because we kind of need to know that difference first. And then we'll look at the current time, which is now, versus the current start time, and we want that to be the same amount before we return. That's what we want to do. Okay, so we'll take a look at the, the calculations, which is in clock. Let's see what we can do with instant, okay, which is the, the internal representation of time inside the clock. So we have all of these things that can uh, calculate duration in milliseconds, okay, that can be useful. Um, we have now, which is the current time, which is definitely useful in this one. And that's about all we can do. So the first thing we need to do is to have a way to compare and do calculations. You cannot compare instance directly. You cannot do calculations of with, with instance directly. So the first thing you really need to do is to get either get milliseconds or better yet, use the duration. Okay, find out the duration in milliseconds. So this seems to be useful. I need to find out how much time has elapsed since the beginning start time and the original time when a dot was captured. Okay, so the difference between these two or the duration will tell me how long I need to wait or, well, um, how long do I have to wait until, you know, I can get back to the, from this subroutine. So this is important. And another duration, I'm gonna pick out another duration here, is using the current start time as the start and using um, now as the end. Okay. Now this is only one way to do it. This is not the only way. Okay, so this is now here. And now I have two durations. I need to compare these two durations and it will tell me whether it's time to go back or not. Well, it seems like I'll be waiting a little bit here. So I need a loop. So I use a loop here and say as long as a certain condition is true, stay in the loop. So the condition that needs to be remain true is to have this amount here greater than this amount here, which is basically saying the delay from the original start time to the time when the dot is captured is greater than the time from the current start time and the current time. So I haven't waited long enough yet. So that we go to math, we do a comparison and then we say if one is greater, if this is greater than the other one, keep waiting. Is that okay? What do we do as we're waiting? Absolutely nothing. Because <laughs> we're just waiting for the right amount of time. We're just waiting for the right delay. Okay, so we now we stick this weight into here somewhere. Okay. All right, so let's pick a good place to put it. The beginning, beginning is good. Okay, so we say, let's wait at the very beginning. 
and then we have to pick out what is the original start time which is fairly easy because the original start time is the, the time of the first pixel in the entire list okay so we go to lists here and then we say go ahead and select out of points the first item yeah. but wait that will give me a list of three items I don't need the entire three item thing we need the third item okay let's select again then so you go here you say select one more time out of what was selected before but this time is the third item which is the time Okay, so that becomes my original start time. The original time is referring to the time when I capture the current point. So what I need to do is to replicate this block here. So we duplicate, but we don't need the second part anymore because we have item. So we have item here. We want the third item of item, which is a list by itself. And the current start time is the start time of this entire thing, so we will need one more variable. Yep. Are those two select, first two select boxes in the right order? You it is in the right order because the because this one is performed first and then this one. This okay. one will turn will this one will select a particular item out of all the points. In other words, it gives me a point. And then this one will take look look at that point and say, okay, we got the X, we got the Y, we got the timestamp. What do you want? Uh, we just need a timestamp. So it, it does work. It, it looks really, really backwards because it's not uh, text-based. If it's text-based, then the last operation is specified first because of the prefix notation. But this is like, you know, it definitely looks backwards. I, I, I understand completely what you mean by that. <laughs> it, it was counterintuitive for me as well. You know, took a lot of time to get used to it. So the, the, the current start time is really the, uh, the start time of the first item. So we just have to do another local variable here to capture that. So we just say that, oh, okay. And we say, let's name this variable current start time to now. Okay, and that now refers to the moment that this particular procedure is called. So we call now over here. There we go. I didn't know you can do that. Okay. I didn't know you can put two initializations like that in the same thing. I've been stacking mine one with any. Oh, okay. Other. Yeah. Every time you see this symbol, it means you know, you can stack. You can have multiple things of some kind. Okay. So, but it's still equivalent to having it you know stacked up. It's just that you might end up with a lot of stacks if you have like six variables. It might push you know, the <coughs> indentation a little bit to the right hand side okay so we just need to make use of current start time over here so we type current start time oh, doesn't like that new okay get variable current start time there we go okay so I'm yeah go ahead Okay. I, I didn't get. I didn't get what that list uh, consists of. And okay. So we'll we'll work on it one by one. Unlike in a normal program where you have parentheses and we go from the innermost of the parentheses out, for this one we have to kind of work from the right hand side because that's a lot. That's the first thing that we do, and work ourselves to the left hand side because that's the last thing that we do on each block. Is that making any sense? Okay, when you, when you look at this block here, okay, what, what is the original start time? What, what specifies the original start time? This thing does, right? Well, when you look at this thing here and it asks, okay, which list am I from which I'm picking the third item? Okay, well, it's this thing that we're picking out of the third, we're picking the third thing. What, what is what that is, thing? Yeah, what does this thing uh, connect, uh, 
Well, well, when you ask that question, then you look at what we supply to this block here. What am I supplying as a list where I get a particular item? Global points. And what is, what is global points? X and Y. X, X and Y. No, no. Each element or each item inside points is a list of X, Y, and time. But that's, but that's because how we constructed it. That's the, it's because of this code here. Yep. And clock now gives a specific number that represents the time now? It's not exactly a number. It is a representation of time. And that's why we cannot do calculations with that. So until you convert into milliseconds or days or whatever, you cannot do calculations with instance. So now it's kind of, so that's why we need durations to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So index 30 is referring to the time now. Index 3 is referring to the time when the first point was captured. Okay, so when you look at this, okay, let me just give you a Hmm. Third, the third element. I'm just trying to find a way to so that we can actually see this more kind of on the on the screen. Yeah. Can you slide up just for a second? Just on that second. There you go. So that third element right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. But that is the time when a point was captured. Yeah. Is that what you're referring to though? With that three? The first one, only the first point. Yeah. So we're going to yep. get the delta between. Yep, exactly. But I have to remember to do that here because you know, the uh, the first point, the very, very first point, did not have that capture yet. Because I have to look at the touchdown event. Oh, I moved it to the other side. <coughs> this one did not have the time capture yet. So I have to make sure that this one does because otherwise it's going to give me a runtime error and say that, hey, there's no third item for the first you know, thing in the, the points. So I've got to remember to do that. Let's not do this. Let, let's make it fail and look at the error message. <laughs> now, a lot of times this is good practice because one, you know what the problem is. You just not want to know what it looks like, right? But it, how, it is how it manifests. So it's, it's a good thing. It's good experiments to conduct, okay? And bam, runtime error. Okay, and it says attempt to get number three of a list of two items. And that's the coordinate. Where's the time? It's not there because it's the first point. It is not captured using the drag event, which is what I modified. This is the point touchdown event handler that is missing it. Okay, that, so that's the that error has nothing to do with time. It's really saying you're trying to get some out of the list that's not that's right. not there. The list only has two items. I time. I'm asking the third item. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's how I know. But this is a good experiment because we already know what the problem is. We just want to know how it is going to show up. Yep, it's really good because once you are used to how problems will show up, then it makes it easier to debug when you encounter those problems in the future. So we say, give me now, and we should be good. All right, so let's see whether this code works or not. We'll make it very slow. Okay, and see if the lines are drawn very slowly, and it's not getting updated. Oh, okay, oh. it goes bam, like that. Okay, so something is not right. The total duration is right, but it didn't show up the lines until after that time. Okay, so let's go ahead and debug this. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to make sure that I am giving it the correct time for each item. That seems to be correct. And the procedure is getting out because otherwise it won't display all the line, all the dots at the same time. But it doesn't want to give me a dot at a time. Hmm. Yeah. So Current start time is used here. But it's only getting that one time when yeah. you do a touch up. 
and then it's using it at every item in the list. Yes, because that's how time is. That's because this is the d this is the delta between the time when the first point was captured to the point to the time when a particular dot was captured. So you're trying to okay, so you're trying to mm -hmm. say delay it by more and more and more and more, basically delaying more mm, for each time. Not you exactly have, delaying would more. Have to, would you have to put your initialized its current start time on each iteration of the loop rather than on the outside of it? Then it becomes just relative. You know, we could yeah. do it that way, but uh, it doesn't uh, need to be. It's, it's the each, same. Each dot you'd be comparing. It is equivalent because when I capture the box, okay, so let's say we're capturing all of these dots, right? So what I'm trying to do is to use this as the original start time, and this duration is how long we have to wait. And then the other one, the current start time is also relative to the time that I paint the first dot. So comparing to now, which is here, I just need the now, the difference between the now and the, ori the, or the, the current start time to match this particular difference. So I'm still matching the same thing. It's just, am I, relative, am I doing it relative to the previous point, or am I relative to the first point? That's the only choice that I, that I have to make. But it should be equivalent. But the program is not doing something that seems to be equivalent, and I have a pretty good idea of why it looks like it is not equivalent. Hmm? Is it that single thread thing? It has to do with single thread thing. It has to do with also that whatever you do is not shown until the event handler is done. So you have to get out of the event each time. Yes. Okay, how do we test that theory? Did the start timer return the clock like we did for our password? Okay, so we, we, we observe several things. Okay, so this is how you do this is how you do debugging. When the programming environment, in this case Appy Matter, does not tell you the specifics, okay, this is how you can test the actual behavior of the program. Okay. We have a suspicion, okay? We have a suspicion that all the points were actually drawn in the right order at the right time in this particular event handler, okay? It's just that nothing gets drawn on the screen while you're still inside the event handler. When the event handler is done, then finally, you know, the engine will kick in and go like, okay, so what do you want me to draw on the screen again? Okay, this dot over here, fine. This line over here, fine, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, because I also teach CISP 363, I know that is a fact when, you, when it comes to actual Android programming. But this is App Inventor, which is one layer on top of, app, uh, on top of Android programming, so it may or may not follow the same rule, because they may change the engine so that that, become, that, that is not an issue. So how do you test something like that? You make a procedure, okay? that will draw two dots, okay? You say draw a dot here, wait two seconds, draw another dot over here. And that's the end of that procedure. You call that procedure from one of the event handlers. And then you then you see, okay, am I drawing a dot over here? Then we draw, draw a dot over here. Or do I wait the entire duration and then bim, bim, two dots suddenly appear on screen at the same time? What event are you thinking will end in that case? Test. You can use a button. Just add a button to the app. Just say press this press this okay. button, and we'll draw two points on the screen with a known delay of time in between. Okay. But they are coming from the same event handler, so that's the key. Okay. Okay. But let's even say that th this program is supposed is working the way it's supposed to. In other words, the points were drawn at the correct time, and it displays gradually on screen. There's still another problem with this program. Let's say it works, okay? There's another problem with this. And I'll focus on the part where the problem really is. Well, it's a problem and it's not a problem. It all depends on how you look at it. This is the problem, okay? This is a while loop, okay? With a while loop, it is the same thing as saying, as long as the following condition is true, keep doing it. 
again. Well, ideally speaking, what we, what we keep doing is what we specify in the do block here. But, but in this case, it's empty. So what happens when this comparison returns a false? What is, what is it going to do? It will do it again, right? It will reevaluate the comparison. If it fails, what is it going to do? Reevaluate. Does it do anything else? No. No, it's, well, it's true. It's doing the loop, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So when it fails, it's going to exit the loop. When it fails, it does exit. When it's true, it will do the loop. But the, the, but the idea is, what do I do when, I, when, when this loop is not exiting? It's it not keeps. Doing it's reevaluating, 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 reevaluating. And what is that going to do to your battery life? <laughs> this is fine when you're doing it in emulation on a desktop computer that's plugged into the AC outlet the entire time. This is not something that you want to do even on a laptop computer that is you that's not, that's on battery, because this is what we call a tight loop or busy loop. It will drain your battery really, really fast. Because the processor is busy. What is it busy doing? Answering that stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> but I call it a stupid question because there are better ways to keep track of time in any computer. Okay? There are specific hardware that can keep track of time using a very little amount of energy. The timer mechanism inside the processor uses very little energy to keep track of time. So this is really not the best way of doing things. Okay. If this is not the best way of doing things, do we have a better way to do it in App Inventor? Because it seems like if we're talking about you know timer devices in the computer and all kinds of stuff that may not be able that we cannot utilize in App Inventor. What else is in the clock that may be able to help us with this? A Starts with a T. <laughs> Starts with a T. Time. The timer. Okay, so the timer of a clock can be helpful because the timer of a clock eventually makes use of the timers inside the processor, inside the circuitry of your cell phone, which is a very you know time. Of, so it's a very energy efficient way of tracking time. Okay, and in a timer, what is the timer? What does it do? Prim primarily, what is what makes a timer a timer? Wait. Exactly. Tell me how long we have to wait, and then at that time after the delay, we'll go ahead and give you an event, and then you do whatever you want in that, in that event. So here's the second question. Why is it saving energy? In other words, what is the computer or what is your cell phone doing before that time is up? Just counting the Mo For the most part, it would do the same thing that I do in my office hours. Which is, yeah, exactly. Those are love. <laughs> Energy saving state, right? I got nothing to do. I'm going to sleep. Right? So until the alarm clock goes off and go like, whoa, what? <laughs> I'm just going to sleep. You know, save energy. So the same thing is happening with your cell phone. So when you say, oh, wake me up in 20 milliseconds, okay, which to us is a very short amount of time, but to your processor, it is a lot of time. Okay, because your process is running at, what, even on the cell phone, we are running at gigahertz now, right? So it can perform billions of operations per second, which translates to millions of operations per millisecond. And if you want to wait 20 milliseconds, which to us is not a lot of time, because there are 50, 20 milliseconds in a second. So to us, 20 milliseconds go like, done. You know? But to a computer, it's a lot of time. 20, in 20 milliseconds, it could do 20 million operations. But that's going to take energy. But instead, if there's nothing to do in those 20 milliseconds, the processor goes like, oh, let, I'll, I'll just go take a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> and it would use the timer as an alarm clock. It would set the alarm clock and go like, wake me up in 20 milliseconds. Ding. OK, I'm going to sleep now. Okay, 20 milliseconds later, the computer wakes up and go like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Oh, right, you know, trigger that event handle or do whatever your code is supposed to do. That is why, you know, it is important, especially on a mobile device, to, be, to pay attention to energy consumption. 
Okay, utilize the operating system, utilize the hardware that helps you save power. Okay, so now let's go ahead and change this program so that it would do that. Now, that would actually change the structure of the program kind of pretty much completely, okay? Because we can't have this loop here anymore. So instead, I'm gonna do it the hard way, okay? We'll toss out everything here and toss out everything over here because we don't need this weight anymore. This is a bad idea, okay? Busy loop is a bad idea. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Well, the touch-up thing is really nothing more than setting up the timer. That's all, okay? Tell me when I'm supposed to wake up, and I do wake up, I expect to have two coordinates ready so that I can draw a line. Does that make any sense? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and have one more global variable to help us track stuff. So we have one more global variable here. Uh, variables, global, and we'll say, uh, draw index, okay, which is the index of which point am I drawing in this particular timer event, okay? And we'll go ahead and initialize it to zero first because, you know, it will always initialize it in the event handler anyway, so that zero is totally useless. So if I touch up, then we'll start to do something, okay? Uh, we'll first set that global variable to some usable value, so we'll go ahead and say set it to um, well, it depends on how you want to look at things. Do you want to specify the index of the first point, or do you want to specify the index of the second point? That's entirely up to you. Uh, just for argument's sake, you know, we are going to use the first point. Okay, so we'll say, uh, let's set this one to one, the number one. Okay, and then we have to set up the timer and go like, okay, wake me up within this many milliseconds. So we go to the clock one, and we say, okay, let's go ahead and set up the timer duration or the period of the timer, which is all the way down. We say set clock one time interval. And what do we want to set it to? We want to set it to the duration between the first point that we capture to the second point that we capture. Okay, so we go to my list. Okay, first of all, we go to clock one because we are calculating the number of milliseconds in between. So we go to duration. And the start of the duration is the time when we capture the very first point of the entire list points. And we had that earlier, but that's okay. We can just always we, we do this one. So we'll need two selects, right? The first select, the so-called first select, is really just for um, selecting the time and then the second select is picking up the first point that we captured okay the first point that we capture is a part of points as my global variable and the index is quite clear because it is just the first one so it has an index of one but when we want, want the time of the first point the index has to be three because that's when we capture the instance or the now. Is that okay so far? So, is that okay? And then we duplicate this block and then we say, okay, the time difference between the capturing of the first point and the second point is how long I want the timer to wait before waking me up again. And then, yep, go ahead. Stop the, time, the clock. Oh, we have to stop the clock at some point, but not here. We don't stop it between say durations. No. Okay. We just let it go. Set the next duration. And then yep. Okay. Because the timer won't actually stack on top of itself. So when you're still inside a timer event handler, the timer cannot go off again when you're inside the event handler. Okay. So those things do not stack, or most operating systems won't let it stack. Um, okay, next thing we need to do is to turn on the timer because it is initially turned off. So we say go ahead and enable the timer. So set timer enable to true. And then we do nothing. We just wait. <laughs> right? Because we set up the timer and say, oh, the time between drawing the first point and the second point is 20 milliseconds. Let's wait 20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds has passed. 
what is going to trigger the code to execute again? We need something to respond to the timer, right? Because you can set up the timer all day long and say, okay, tell, wake me up again in 20 milliseconds. But if you don't tell the app what to do after 20 milliseconds, the timer, the alarm clock will go off. But you won't do a single thing because you did not say what to do when the timer goes off. So we need to specify the timer event handler for the clock to do something. And this is the only event handler for a clock is just to say, okay, when the timer goes off, when the alarm goes off, what am I supposed to do? There are several things, okay? The so first thing is to draw that point, okay, between um, the index and index plus one, okay? So we'll go ahead and draw that line. So we go to canvas, and then we say, let's draw a line. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and just draw a line in this case. <clears throat> when you draw a line, you need to know what is the first point and what is the second point. So I'm going to be lazy and just duplicate these blocks over here. It's not entirely correct, but it's pretty close. Because we still need to get stuff out of the points as a global variable, but the index is no longer constant because now it is controlled by my global variable. Remember draw index? This is where we use it. Okay, so we say draw index as a global variable. And we don't want the third component. We want the first component of that point, which is my x coordinate. Duplicate this so that we can get to the y coordinate of the first point that we are drawing. So we change the 1 to a 2. Oops. Ah. Change the 1 to a 2. There we go. OK, now we can take this block, duplicate this, except we are looking at the next point. So we are no longer using draw index. We are looking at draw index plus one. So if we go to math, we do the addition, and say, let's add this to the number one, and use that as the index of the second point that we are drawing to connect in the line. And then we duplicate this and specify the y coordinate of the second point. Oops y coordinate of the second point. Oh, two. I keep typing y, but it's supposed to be two. There we go. OK, so that would draw that line. But the timer interval is still using the time interval between drawing the first point and the second point here, not the next duration. So I have to recompute the duration. Yes, go ahead. Scroll there. Oh, OK. OK. So now we have to calculate the time between those two and set the timer again, set the timer duration. Well, before we set the timer duration, we better check, well, are we done yet? Because if, if I'm done, I just turn off the timer because everything is good, right? So I need to make the determination using a conditional statement. So we go to control, and we use a conditional statement and say, well, you know, we want to see whether it is time to turn off the timer entirely or do we have something else to do? So in if then else is going to be useful. So we want to see, OK, is draw index telling me that this is the last thing to draw and all done? OK, how do I know? OK, what, what are the pieces that I need in order to know whether this is the last line segment that they need to draw? Let's, let's pick out something that might be useful. OK, so we'll, we'll start with those. Um, I think draw index is going to be useful, don't you think? Because that's the one thing that is going to change um, every single time we have a timer event. So I think that's going to be useful. The other thing that's going to be useful is how many things do we really have in points as a list. That seems to be useful. So we go to list and say, how long is that list? OK, and the list name is points. There we go. So these two things are important to determine, are we done yet? Okay. So when we say that draw index is um, the length of the entire list, we have definitely done. <coughs> okay. But we are the index draw index is always one less than the index of the very last point. So now you have a choice. Okay. You can increment it before the comparison and just do a straight compare for equality, or you can compare for less than and then increment later on. Okay, that's entirely up to you. Okay. 
but we know we need some kind of comparison here. So we go to comparison, we pick out the comparison block, and as I said, if you want to increment after, you just use a less than, okay? You want to make sure that the draw index is still less than the number of items in the list, which means, okay, we still have something else to do. Let me see, is that the case? No, that's not true. You have to add one to this first and then compare for less than because the next point, the next time we have to interrupt, it's going to be the next two points, right? So we have to add one to this first. So we have to remember to do the add one, which already have here. So we duplicate this block, take this out, and substitute it here. Or you can do the increment before the comparison, okay? Which is the other way to do it. So you can always do the increment first. So you can say set draw index to be draw index plus one. Then you can just use draw index for the compare over here. Which is a little bit, it, it makes a little more sense even though it's just really equivalent. But it makes a little more sense like this. Okay, you compare, you, incre you increment first and then you compare. And if it is still less than, that means you know, we got something else to do, okay? And if we have something else to do, we better set up the time interval. So we set up the time interval to the duration. So we go to clock one, we pick out duration. The nice thing is duration is already returning the number of milliseconds, which is what you need to set a timer interval. And the start time is gonna be Something like this. Okay. Except we're looking at the third element, which is the timestamp, as opposed to the end. Oops, and then, yep, that's, that's right. Mm, nope, we're missing something. We're missing something because we need to pick out the third item. There we go. Okay, so let's see whether this makes sense or not. Let's, let's just look at this block and see what it's specifying. Okay, so we start with this part here, okay? So this part is basically saying, okay, let's look at a particular point that we have captured and just, that, that's that point. And then this block is saying, okay, we don't need the entire point, which is x, y, and also the time. We just need to know the time. So that's the start time. And then we look at this part here, okay? It's another point, but this is the point after draw index, right? Because we have draw index plus one as the index into the points list. So this is the next point. But boy, we don't need the next point, the entire point, which is x, y, and also the time. We just need the time itself. So that's why we're only selecting the third item of that thing. And now we have two times or time two timestamps. We just specify one as the start, the other one as the end, so that we can calculate the duration in milliseconds. And that is the number of that is the, the amount of time I have to wait before the next timer event is supposed to happen. So that's what we need to do to set up the next timer event. And then over here, which is basically saying what if draw index is greater than or equal to the the, the length of the entire list points? Well, there's nothing left to do. So let's turn off the clock and we are all set. We're all done. So in this case, we set timer enable to false so that we don't have any further timer events at this point. Is that okay? Well, let's check it out, see if it works. So we go to the emulator, which is not doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and reset the connection and start up the emulator again. Yeah, busy waiting is very bad and unfortunately a lot of people are used to it. So in a, on a desktop application, some people would use an empty loop using a for loop 
and they would they would even go through the trouble of timing it. It's like okay, if I go from if I goes from one to twenty gazillion, it's about one second. <laughs> so they would have defined a delay one second procedure just to do that. So now if you need to wait ten seconds, it would just be a loop to go through that invocation ten times. All right, so I think we got it working here. So let's go ahead and draw a very slow as here. Ah. <laughs> and then we'll draw a fast one, like that. And then we'll draw some, we'll draw some circles really fast. And we'll draw something slow and fast and slow and fast and slow and fast. Okay, slow. Fast, faster, <laughs> slow again, fast. All right, so I think it's working, right? So are there any questions about this whole thing? Okay, if there are no questions, we are running out of time today. I will be available at the lab to answer questions for the current homework assignment, which is, you know, the, I think most of you are done with that, but if you do have questions, we'll go ahead and address those questions. And I'm going to upload the video because you know, it's, not a, it's not stored anywhere except for the RAM of this computer. So I need to do this here. So as you guys go out, you can ask the next class to come in because you know, I don't want them to have to wait for me just doing the uploading.